get planning permission and development consent order after that for a new runway at Heathrow Airport, that will create another 77,000 jobs uh, and 10,000 apprenticeships. This has the scope to end unemployment in the West London uh, Thames Valley area, make a huge difference for the whole country as well at a time of Brexit, and create over 180,000 jobs nationally. To be able to lead a campaign um, to do that is um, you know, a huge privilege and an opportunity for me to put something back into an area I care very deeply about. The fact that we've been talking about a third runway at Heathrow for you know, over 40 years without actually getting on and doing it, I think Brexit um, really provides an additional imperative in terms of providing the country with that kind of long-term stability and um, I understand it'd be worth some like a 61 billion pound boost to the economy. The transport secretary Chris Grading has said there will be a definitive vote in Parliament of MPs. Mm. So that will happen. It's really important that we get the message across to our MPs saying stop shilly-shallying. You know, Brexit and the uncertainty that goes with that is happening. We need to get on with this and do it. We need to get on with it and do it anyway because our busiest, most important airport is 98% capacity. And I think the more politicians look at the detail of the argument and the debate and the opportunity, they will actually come round to, to our view. 83% of the submissions that they had for the Davis Commission, uh, the Independent Airports Commission, were supportive of Heathrow expansion. Well, I would say, Zach, uh, if you're so sure of yourself, do what you did last time. Have another referendum in your constituency. We all saw how that ended up. He was wrong then, he's wrong this time as well. some inventive plans coming forward about restoring peatlands for example that will make a huge difference in terms of reduction of CO2. There is going to be massive investment in public transport around Heathrow which will reduce the journey times but reduce CO2 as well. We've seen double the number of planes going to Heathrow but a reduction by 90% of people affected by noise. That's because technology has moved on, aircraft have become quieter, they become cleaner and part of the conditions in the first place for Heathrow expansion is sticking to EU regulations on noise and air pollution. The local air is in my lungs as, as well as someone who grew up there. It's in no interest in mind to, to poison my family members. Yeah. The compensation package, um, as I understand it, and I've been reading up on this quite a lot, would now involve 125% of the value of those homes. interesting that uh, the plans as I understood it have come like three years after the the, uh, the uh, commission. Any, any serious plan, I mean I, I could come up with a plan, you could come up with a plan, anyone down the street could come up with a plan. Uh, today, tomorrow, in six months time or even after a, a planning application process has uh, taken place and the vote has taken place. But everyone knew that the independent airports commission was taking place. It's not as if it was a new thing at the time. These plans have been kicking around as I say for 40 years. As a, as a cleaner in local hospitals, my dad worked in factories, became a truck driver. So many others, including my grandfather on my mother's side, managed to get himself a cleaning job at Heathrow Airport. But if you go to Heathrow Airport, and so many of us know people who work there, yeah, it's very, very diverse, of course. Very high proportion of people from Asian backgrounds, lots of women. Uh, my, my ambition is not just to grow those jobs, but there's a whole other generation now who want the more skilled jobs as, as engineers, um, as IT people. Um, and this is a great opportunity, not just in terms of filling roles, 
but in terms of skills academies that have been created locally and apprenticeships to actually develop skills for local people long term 